The year is half over. You know what time it is. It is happening again. Yes, these are my top 15 metal albums of 2023 so far, and we're starting with Hell Ripper, Warlocks, Grimm, and Withered Hags. Black and Thrash continues to be my favorite style of thrash, and Hellripper out here once again showing how it's done for the new blood. This is some truly wicked stuff filled with wailing solos, chugging triplets, and hellish snarls, and made even more impressive when remembering that this is all the singular work of Scottish musician James McBain. Tracks like Eye Deceiver, The Hissing Marches, and Goat Vomit Nightmare are pure, unadulterated headbang frenzies of punky D-beats, motorhead hooks, maiden-esque harmonies, and rumbling bass grooves that never fail to put a smile on my face. While others like the Knuckle of A also tie in some mellow-death-sounding riffs a la Dissection. Combined with occult and satanic imagery, it makes for a devilishly good time. Eva is good! Next up is Mithridatum with Harrowing. Featuring former members of Abhorrent and The Faceless, this dissonant black and death metal trio should be a welcome addition to listeners from the likes of Kralis, Gorguts, and Deathspell Omega. Several of you out there listed them as a strong recommendation earlier in the year, and with the level of technicality on display, I could see why. And yet, despite the dizzying maelstrom of sound, harrowing never feels like style over substance. <laughs> Quite to the contrary, there is a very carefully orchestrated malevolence that keeps the otherwise chaotic drumming and atonal guitars from derailing into pretentious off-putting noise. And true to its title, this album really does get under the skin and leave me feeling genuinely distressed throughout its brisk 35-minute runtime. You're gonna love it. Then we have Thy Catafalque with Alfold. One of the most highly regarded projects in avant-garde black metal once more does not disappoint. Blazing hellfire riffs, but also strange detours I'd compare to the music of Psy. Unpredictable journeys of throbbing brass, chaotic wailing solos, plotting progressive riffs, and cathartic female singing alongside folky acoustic guitars. Then there's the stunning jazz flute, strings, and video game soundtrack vibes of Foyandar. And of course my personal favorite, the chugging and very enslaved sounding closer. Neymar Vermeck. The mastermind behind it all describes it as the most straightforward and classic extreme metal album the project has ever recorded. And while that rings true to some extent in the highly relative accessibility of these tracks, I don't think he can ever truly help himself from getting at least a little weird. Seemingly proof that even at 10% power, Thy Catafalque is miles above the competition. Next up is Nightmare with Deformity Adrift. I instantly fell in love with 2018's Cacophony of Terror, which is sitting on the shelf behind me, and this follow-up continues with that same ferocious flurry of chaotic guitars and drumming. Think of it as a cross between the groove-ridden infectiousness of Meshuggah with the more strange and dissonant elements of bands like Artificial Brain. And really, that's a difficult balance to find, so my hat's off once more to this band for bringing complex and challenging performances in a package that is still relatively palatable for those still making the transition from more broad and traditional death metal. And in spite of the short runtime, the reverb-heavy production makes the journey feel absolutely massive and utterly harrowing. Then we have Necropanther with Betrayal. One of my favorite underground bands is back again with their killer fusion of black and thrash and melodic death metal. If you dug Hellripper and enjoy bands like Skeleton Witch, you need to buy this album. The sheer amount of riffage on display alone is well worth the price tag. <laughs> Furthermore, each Necropanther album is conceptually centered on a film adaptation, previously covering Dune and Logan's Run, and now tackling a combination of 1979's The Warriors, Warriors come out to play. 
and the ancient Greek story of Anabasis on which that was based. These elements only further expanding the impressive scope of their sound. We still have plenty of albums left, but if you're enjoying the video, be sure to hit the like button and comment your favorites as we go along down below. But next up, we have Entheos with Time Will Take Us All. Call them death metal or deathcore if you want, this band's talent when it comes to progressive songwriting and technical performances renders the entire argument moot. Just a duo for this album, Naveen handles all of the impressively technical and progressive again, guitars and drums, while Chaney continues to tear it up on vocals. Her syncopated screams continue to dominate, but it's also nice to hear some cleans too on tracks like Oblivion and I Am The Void. <laughs> Absolute Zero is a banger of an opener, seeming to fuse Meshuggah with Archspire and then moving seamlessly into the equally wicked In Purgatory and the Interior Wilderness. In fact, the entire album feels like various movements of one singular but ever-changing composition. Then we have Portrayal of Guilt with Devil Music. <laughs> This has been a really interesting band to follow over the past few years, as with each new release they only seem to become even more dark and raw, drifting into similar atmosphere as groups like Indian and Lord Mantis. Devil Music finds the band further experimenting with a side A and side B that offer two different interpretations of these same five songs. First with the usual sickening churn of distortion, but then again with some demonic string quartet complete with Robert Eggers-like imagery. Everything an extreme metal fan could want is on display here, malevolent blackened vocals like a demon spitting phlegm and bile, sludgy reptilian sounding guitars, and apocalyptic blast beats. By the end I feel as if my soul has been completely drained from my body, but Side B in particular really made this something that stood out from the pack so far this year. It's disgusting! Then we had Dawn of Auroboros with Velvet Incandescence. <laughs> This California band has a sound that's difficult to nail down with elements of death metal, progressive, post-rock, and shoegaze. I could compare the atmosphere to everything from Kardashev, Numenorian, and Fallujah to Panopticon and the most recent album from Venom Prison. But really, Velvet Incandescence is entirely its own thing, which is the quality I find most exciting in new music these days. Like I've said before, I can still enjoy the more run-of-the-mill, blacker death metal release that's done well, but bands still capable of crafting something wholly original are the ones that tend to stick out to me. Not to mention Chelsea Murphy's vocal performance is somehow both one of the most devastating and rejuvenating I've heard all year. Then we had Gorod with The Orb. I've been in love with this band since a maze of recycled creeds, and five years in the wake of the equally strong Aethra, this was one of the most anticipated follow-ups of 2023 for me. And with bangers like Savitri and of course The Orb, I am not the least bit, again, disappointed. In particular, that tapping section on We Are the Sun Gods is absolutely delightful. <laughs> Just listening to the guitars on this album gives me arthritis, and that's not even to mention the equally dizzying bass and drumming. And compositions range from chaotic displays of technicality to others that resemble elements of Gojira. Prog fans, you know what you have to do. Using the power of the orb. Next up is Periphery with Periphery 5, Gent is not a genre. <laughs> With the release of Wildfire and Zagreus, it was clear that this album would continue to both lean into their progressive side while also testing the limits of their aggression, delivering catchy choruses, Meshuggah-esque interludes, and even some smooth jazz. And this scope holds true in many longer compositions, including Everything is Fine, Dracul Gra, and Atropos.
Even shorter songs offer serious contrast with Everything is Fine going nearly full Dillinger escape plan only to be followed up immediately by the synth pop surprise of Silhouette. The experimentation can be hit and miss at times, but it's always welcome over just regurgitating the same formula over and over again. Not their best album, you can see the tier list ranking I did to see what I put at the top, but true to form, still one of the more ambitious albums you'll hear this year. Speaking of which, we also have Enslaved with Heimdall. In my book, Enslaved are one of the greatest bands of all time with one of the strongest discographies out there and they have done it again with Heimdall. Behind the Mirror starts things off on a very head bob inducing note, somewhat reminiscent of thoughts like Hammers while Congelia calls back to their icier black metal roots. Forest Dweller has a lush sense of scope and wonder, but my favorite continues to be the very proggy caravans to the outer worlds. Start to finish, every track here has something special to offer, from surprising synth work to more obvious flourishes of 70s prog influence. Unmatched atmosphere, as always, and another fantastic showcase of the broad scope of sound that this band is capable of covering. Good. At our best. Then we have Pupil Slicer with Blossom. Following in similar footsteps as CU Space Cowboy, this band has greatly expanded their sound from an already impressive display of bludgeoning mathcore on tracks like No Temple and Creating the Devil in Our Image to elements of alternative, emo, and post-rock on tracks like Blossom and Momentary Actuality. Yeah, Dim Morning Light also opens with a silky, effects-soaked guitar riff straight out of a Deftones album, as would a few of these sick bass lines. And the drumming is absolutely incredible across the board. In some ways, I could compare their sound to that of Rolo Tomasi, who dropped one of my favorite albums last year, but really Pupil Slicer are doing their own thing, and I think that Blossom is easily their strongest testament to that fact to date. Then we have Scar Symmetry with the Singularity Phase 2 Xenotaph. <laughs> some long titles this year. <laughs> Another incredibly underrated melodic death metal band returns with their progressive take on the genre that sort of soil work meets Devin Townsend. Don't let the kind of corny cover art turn you away either, because this is riffage of the highest degree. Chrono Nautilus and Scorched Quadrant lead the way, equal parts crushingly heavy and incredibly catchy. <laughs> Altergeist also has some Isan vibes, and I love the meshuga e breakdowns on A Voyage with Tailed Meteors. Honestly, this is more of what I was looking for from the last Soilwork album, carrying a similar energy as that opening title track all the way through. And between the powerful cleans and wicked soloing, this thing gets truly epic in every sense of the word. Top-notch stuff and just what you want from a band coming off of nearly a decade of no new material. More. More. Then there's August Burns Red with Death Below. I've been a long time fan of this band and consider them to be one of the most consistent metalcore groups of the 2000s that are still putting out some of their best material. The singles on this one got me pretty hyped up again, not only with the usual display of great musicianship, but also some great guest appearances from that classic era of metalcore, including Spencer Chamberlain of Under Oath and Jesse Leach of Killswitch Engage. But as usual, the band does just fine on their own with an incredible mix of sing-along anthems, pit-worthy ragers, and progressive jaw-droppers, including the powerful closer Reckoning. Not a single dud to be found here for another album that just might be on par with my personal favorite, Found in Faraway Places. Check out my tier list for the full discography ranking, but this is a must for metalcore fans this year, maybe even those who generally don't like where the genre has gone. Also, honorable mention on a same wavelength to the new Unearth album. And then my favorite metal album of 2020 three so far goes to cattle decapitation with Terracite. The boys have outdone themselves once again. Fantastic singles here with Travis covering the full spectrum of his vocal acrobatics on We Eat Our Young. And Scourge of the Offspring is even better with verses that go so hard with some really fantastic drumming, but then offset by another soaring melodic goblin chorus. <laughs> Patriarch. 
And then the deeper cuts are equally awesome. Love these super gnarly, phlegmy vocals and riffing on the insignificance. Aphotic Doom, Dead End Residence, Solastalgia, and the Storm Upstairs bring more serious stank face groove. And then we close with the epic 10 plus minute Just Another Body. Personally, I like this album even more than Death Atlas. And again, check out the tier list I did for my full discography ranking. Also check out this playlist for even more of my favorite metal albums of 2023 by month. And again, let me know down in the comments what are your favorites so far. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.